Hi, everyone. Welcome to Songs for Black Days, our brand new podcast about music as medicine. Today, we have a very special guest, legend of the game, legend of heavy metal, absolute music, passionate nerd in the best possible way, Max Cavalera. Hello, everyone. Good to be here talking. I love the, the, the music as medicine reference. That's so cool. It is medicine. It is what we, that's what we need when we're feeling down. People in general, I think music is so good in so many ways. Okay, let's kick off with your first song. The first one is actually Link Ray. I'm a big fan of Link Ray. Unfortunately, I discovered him just a couple years ago. Maybe it was five years ago. But I love, I love everything I heard about him. I love his guitar playing. I love the fact that he's Native American. There's a great documentary called the Rumble. That's the name of the song that I picked. The Indians that rock the world. It's all about Native Americans that plays music. This song Rumble, it's cool because it's an instrumental. And it's the only instrumental ever to be banned from the radio stations. And that on itself is amazing. Like just to think that you you created an instrumental that gets banned because incites violence between the youth. <laughs> it actually says on the Wikipedia, it says a glorified juvenile juvenile delinquency. I think Tarantino used it in one of his soundtracks. Of course he did. People talk about it a lot. I seen, I think Iggy Pop said that riff is what made him want to be a singer. I wish I could make an instrumental that gets banned. I, I'll try forever. Definitely. Okay, just, just some collaborations to briefly, because I did write this question. I feel like it's the right time to bring it up. Does um, How does the different energy with other people, and you've done so many collaborations, how does that make you feel? And what's like a collaboration that like completely lifted you up to another place? One has got to be when I actually, I was, I was invited. So it was the Daftones on their, on their second record. I got invited to do Head Up with them. And it was all because Dana, uh, Chino loved Dana, Gloria's son that was murdered in 96. And had this incredible bond with him and he wanted to do a song about him and um this is when i came up with the word soul fly was in this song and was was it was totally it was awesome it was in in seattle we were working with terry date and i just remember right in the middle of the session we were going for it we both had our handheld mics we're singing our asses off and chino hit his knee on his nose and got a bloody nose the blood flew everywhere you know it was like one of those it's like a live show you know it's like those not supposed to be happening in a safe studio environment should not blood should not be involved in that situation but it was there's like his whole face is bloody he's still singing i'm going for it i'm screaming terry dates taking pictures going yeah yeah this is awesome um so yeah that was that was a an amazing moment i never forget um, and I, I saved one of my best riffs ever for that song. I had a, you know, I had my arsenal of riffs and stuff. I was going to save it for Soulfly. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice this one. And it's like alchemy. And I think one of the reasons why, like, especially those two songs are songs for other people's black days. And I think it has a lot to do with the energy you guys had in the studio because you can feel it. You can feel it. It's uplifting. It's like, you know, it takes you to another place. Yeah. Okay, let's go to song two. So the next one is a newer band. Yeah. <clears throat> They're called uh, Midnight. The song is Hol Holocaust Deafening. It's a very old school. These chart, I think the track is only a minute and 50. Like sometimes before I play, if I listen to that song before I do a gig, I'll be ready to get on the stage and destroy. I'm going to keep on the weird. Um, okay. So this is, I don't know much about this, but I I, I, I fell in love. Like, I think I, I discovered this song two years ago. And um, I was talking to a friend of mine that likes a lot of blues. And I was asking for 
stuff, Robert Johnson kind of stuff that I should check it out because I was like curious about that world a little bit, you know. And then he told me about this guy, Blind uh, Blind Gary David, you know, like you should check, definitely check him out. And he's got an album called Har Harlan Street Singer from 1960. And uh, the song I pick is called Death Don't, Death, Death Don't Have No Mercy in This Land. Death take the land one of the family. And there's some, there's some hard lyrics that's, that's a that's a a, a a a title that you could see on a, I can see that on a Chromax album or or on a Dark Throne album, you know, <laughs> not on a blues album from 1960. You know, death have don't have no mercy in this land. Like death would just comes in your house and kill you. That's like, and the lyrics are really about that. Death comes mm -hmm. in your house and takes somebody from your family. It's fucking depressive shit yeah. like really really bluesy i think it's just him and the guitar there's no drums no nothing it's like old recording but there's a purity about it and there's something cool about just being just that just a guy with a guitar just saying those things mm. very powerful stuff i just love the title of the song totally i, I wish i wish i could think of a song title like that uh well, such a cool name you know speaking of it song. Speaking of it, like obviously you've experienced like the most significant kind of loss you can experience. What what kind of what kind of songs did you turn to at moments like that? Yeah. It's hard. It's so hard. Yeah. People think it's easy. Like oh yeah, just yeah, just do express what's in your heart. Yeah, it's easy to say it, but it's harder harder to do it. Mm. Uh, there's been a couple of times where I, I it, something good strong came out i think dark ages is a good example when i made dark ages yeah was right when dimebag died and my grandson moses also died in this apart two days apart from each other and, and mm. i was in the studio mm. and I, that's when i made the, the reference in, in the studio i said i feel like we're living in in a in the in a dark age in the dark ages right now and i was like i i think i'm gonna call the record dark ages mm. because of that so it was a it's a a reaction of the moment from Dimebag, which was a, a a dear friend of mine, and many tours together, had hours of interaction with the guy, and was always a, a great guy, always cool stuff with him, and hearing the news of his death, coming back from the studio and walking in the house and Gloria telling me what happened. I didn't compute. My brain just kind of went like, like kind of explode, you know, like, hold on, repeat those words you just said, because I don't think I can compute that right now. Like, mm -hmm. what the hell did you just say to me? You know? And, yeah. and it was like, I think a lot of people felt that, it's, it's our JFK moment. It's our JFK moment. Like I remember being in high school and 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 everyone hearing about it and it being like the moment. Where were you when JFK was shot? It was like that for heavy metal. Like we were all like oh, metal, yeah. so moved it, by it. Like yeah, and it shocked and touched everybody. And mm. um, and so for me, it was that's when I made the the song, uh, yeah. the record Dark Age. Just call it the record Dark Age. I think it was a very appropriate time yeah for that. Um, a lot of uh, another record that feels very close to that is Soul Fly One. Come around, come around, um, that's like the the hardest record I ever made, and I, I I'm knocking on wood right now. I don't have to make another one of those. Um, it was very hard because it was, it was dealing with the death of Dana and splitting from Sepultura. Like those two things were taken away from me. And it was like, one was, uh, a, a, you know, a stepson, um, a guy that live, I live, live in my house with, you know, we, we talk about music the whole time. And he introduced me to Deftones and, and Korn and Clutch and a lot of, you know, Biohazard and all these bands. And uh, dealing with this death, the only other death I dealt with this was my father, you know, when I was nine years old, and then Dana. Mm. And uh, 
you know, there's the whole story. I said, I said yeah. that on the on the book. I tell the story. We were playing in England, and we had to fly back home. Um, yeah. I didn't end up not doing the show, and went home with Gloria, and uh, it was just a crazy moment. Try to put those into music thoughts. Very difficult, but I think uh, Soulfly One is full of that, especially songs like Bleed. Totally. Um, yeah, no hope, no fear. Those, I think I love the word, the lyrics of no hope, no fear, because that's exactly where I was mentally. I mm. was in a place where there's no hope at all, yep. but also there was no fear. Like I give zero fucks about everything right now. You know, I don't care anymore. It's like it doesn't matter. You know, and those are it's a rare place. It's a it's a strange place to be. It's a it's a lonely place, you mm-hmm. know. It's not a comfortable place, so it's one of those records. They're they're not really fun to make. Mm-hmm. They're necessary, yeah. And some a lot of times they come out good because of the pain, you know. That's the same thing. Like it's kind of a gift into the world of kind of putting that on record and giving it to other people because we all go through stuff like this, and that that kind of stuff is really you know it's soulful. Yeah, and I think like even cross which are the again to the magic realm mm. um we end up burying the tapes uh, we had the it was like one of my last analog recordings i did before everything went digital so we still have all these big tapes analog tapes and uh so me and chino and the other guys in soulfly we dig these big graves in the backyard of the studio in, in malibu and we bury them and we left them buried for 24 hours. 